what's going on we're doing problem 1218 and again we're doing um, you know kin 2d kinematics um, and find the equations of a particle moving in a straight line path so we should be very comfortable with that already uh, we're given the equation in terms of uh, the y equation in terms of x right so it's pretty much telling us we have to turn this in terms of time all right uh, y equation in terms of time and they give us another thing they give us is vx is 2t squared all right so in order to go to figure out what the y the velocity in the y uh, direction is we need to get the position function in terms of x right or the position function in the x direction so what that means is let's take one integral integrate vx right because we know dx dt right so we know 2t squared dt dx and since we won't need to figure out the constant here I'm just going to skip over it because we're, we're going to be dealing with velocity and acceleration and when you take the derivative of a constant they go away regardless right so uh, we we won't need to do that. So t integrating once we get t t cubed over three, uh, you know plus c one or something like that. But again, taking the derivative of that, it goes away. Uh, equals x. Okay. So now we can get our y equation is one half times x, which is two t cubed over three. Right. Get the twos out of the way. And then we have our y equation is t cubed over 3. All right? Now that we have this the position in the y annex, right? just take two time derivatives and we'll arrive at our answer shortly. So vy, right? Remember, it's just going to be one time derivative. And let's just start getting used to this notation because we'll be, we'll, we'll be seeing it more in this book y dot, whenever you see a dot, that's just, it just means a, a time derivative, all right? And that's what it means, a time derivative, not a, a spatial derivative, okay? So this will be 3t squared over 3, right? So we have dy equals t squared, and then vx is going to be 2t Oops. T. This will be s squared. Got confused there. I'm like, what was it? What are they doing? All right. So yeah. So I'm leaving it like this. That way, you, you know, just cancel those right away, and then you get two t squared, right? And then ax. Is just two t, right? And then, oh, sorry, this is a y. Sorry, a y, and then a x is equal to four t. Okay, so we have our two. <coughs> I guess our most important things right here. A x. Oh, it's freezing again. And v x. All right, we have our velocities, our accelerations, and now they want to know the magnitude of the acceleration velocity at t equals four seconds. All right, so now let's just solve that. So we know v <coughs> vx at four seconds. What's vy at four seconds? Okay vx at 4 seconds that is where are you 2t squared that'll be 32 meters per second and then vy at 4 seconds that is just going to be 16 meters per second right it's just 2 times x vx and then ax is going to be 16 meters per second squared and then ay will just be 8 meters per second squared. Now to get the magnitude, we'll just 
again we'll square each term so that's 32 squared plus 16 squared which is equal to 35.8 ish meters per second and then the same thing for acceleration that'll be or what do we have so we had six uh, yeah 16 squared plus 8 squared I'm running out of room all right and then when you take this you will end up getting an acceleration of 17.9 meters per second squared okay so if you get stuck in this problem you're trying to just do it without any help remember lay out everything you know and then try to integrate or take derivatives so you can try to get the, the all the kinematic equations or you know try to describe the position of that particle in the y direction and x direction as much as possible and then once you know those position acceleration and velocity then you can try to work your way through the problem all right guys hope this video helped um, i'll see you in the next video thanks for your time later